Welcome in to Ravens Rundown, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us on today's show. The Ravens have made a free agent signing. More on that in just a moment. Also, we'll take a look at some wide receiver free agent targets for the Ravens. And the new Monday Night Football crew out of ESPN, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, they weighed in on Ravens star quarterback Lamar Jackson. We'll tell you what they had to say about Lamar coming up in just a little while from right now. Let's start out with the news of the day as Vince Beagle has signed with the Ravens. The former Miami Dolphin is on a one-year contract with terms still to be announced, and Beagle has not played a whole lot in the National Football League in his limited time. He has been a practice squad player for much of his time in the league, a backup and he didn't get promoted last year to the Dolphins' active roster till about November 24th. So this is somebody that doesn't have a whole lot of experience, and the Ravens, of course, trying to fill out that 90-man roster before all the off-season activities get going with training camp just around the corner. So this feels like just another body of some sorts. Maybe might make one of those final 53-man roster spots, but not a game-changer by any means of this pickup by the Ravens uh, here with this latest signing. My one-word reaction to this, meh. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. It's not something that is going to move the needle by any means. I mean, his numbers last year for Vince, two tackles. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, two tackles. No sacks, no Tackles for loss, no forced fumbles, no fumble recovery. So it, it doesn't move the needle at all. It's another body in there, but nonetheless, hey, it's somebody there. So with that being said, with that in mind, how would you grade the signing? Well, hmm, <laughs> you tell me because it's not a high-profile signing. It's another body there, <laughs> A, B, C, D, or F. You're going to get an ad break, take advantage of it. While the ad's playing, get your votes in of how you think the Ravens did with this signing of Vince Beagle. So the Ravens continue to be in the wide receiver market. When they had that signing of Beagle, I think we were hoping to hear if the Ravens were going to sign anybody that it would be a wide receiver. Not quite. Well, Sports Illustrated released a list with four wide receiver options for the Ravens, and we'll show you that in just a moment in case you missed it. But I want to start out with this quote from Glenn Clark of PressBox.com. This actually showed up on the Ravens' website. <laughs> Not joking. Pretty serious news there about the situation involving the wide receivers in Baltimore. He said Jarvis Landry seemed like the safest bet for what was left on the free agent market to be able to make some sort of impact. I don't want to overreact to losing one player who had two receiving touchdowns a year ago, but it's hard to look at this situation with purple colored glasses. We have to describe what's facing the Ravens as what it is. It's a damn crisis. Mm. Not great. You lose Marquise Brown, who was the top receiving target for the Ravens this past year, and there's no clear replacement at this point. Rashad Baton steps into that number one receiver role, but his numbers weren't great last year. So with that being said, here's some options according to SI. Julio Jones is available, the former Tennessee Titan and Atlanta Falcon. T.Y. Hilton, the former Indianapolis Colt. Odell Beckham Jr., who's just coming off a Super Bowl championship with the Los Angeles Rams. And then Will Fuller, who spent this past year with the Houston Texans. Here's the thing, with all four of those options that you see on your screen right there, they have all dealt with injury issues as of late. All four have been very successful players in their own rights and have made a name for themselves and proven themselves time and time again, but they all four have injury issues. So when you look at a wide receiving core like what the Ravens have right now, if you're going to take one of those four guys, you're taking – in older vets, and if you're looking for depth, that depth could evaporate pretty quickly with knowing where these guys are at with their injury history. So, with that being said, with knowing that you got to turn to one of those guys if you're going to sign a wide receiver, and looking at the wide receiving core where it's at, are the Ravens in crisis mode right now? I want to hear from you guys. Type Y for yes, type in for no. I'll tell you my take here in just a second, but let's get the ad going 
Get your votes in while that ad is playing and tell me what you think. Why for yes, in for no, if the Ravens are in crisis mode at wide receiver? For me, yes, the Ravens are in crisis mode at wide receiver, but the silver lining in all this for me is the tight end room. Although the Ravens have their issues at wide receiver, they have arguably the best tight end room in the National Football League, led by Mark Andrews and drafting Charlie Kolar. We talked about that on yesterday's show. If you missed it, go watch that. I highly recommend. But right now, here's the depth chart for the Ravens at wide receiver. Rashad Bateman, your number one guy. I think Tylen Wallace is going to surprise some people this year coming off a season where he didn't do much, hardly at all. The former Oklahoma State All-American, I think, could be a big impact for this Ravens offense. He's a name I'm watching for. But that's what I look at with this Ravens team right now is that you're going to adjust the offense. It's not going to be a downfield passing game. You're going to rely on on the short passing game and running the football a whole lot with Lamar Jackson and your great running back. So, yes, the Ravens need help with their wide receivers, and it is in a crisis mode, but it could be worse. <laughs> I know that sounds funny to say, but it, it's true. They, they do get bailed out by how good their running backs and how good their tight ends are. Stay up to date with us here on Ravens Rundown. We're talking about this team each and every day on the channel. And the best way to do so, subscribe, youtube.com slash Ravens TV. The best part about it, it's 100% free. My favorite price. We'll cover everything from free agent signings all the way up to training camp. Everything you need to know is right here on the channel. Ravens Rundown each and every day. Tell a friend or two or 50 about what we're doing here and subscribe now. Turn those notifications on as well. YouTube.com slash Ravens TV. Lamar Jackson, the star quarterback for the Ravens, the former MVP, was discussed earlier today from ESPN's new Monday Night Football broadcasters, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. They're going to be doing more of the AFC teams now, now that they're not doing the Fox games and doing the ESPN package. And they were asked about Lamar Jackson. So I want to get to a couple quotes from both Joe and Troy. Let's start out with this from Joe, what he had to say about Lamar. But I think there's a bit of pressure on him, Lamar, to kind of erase what happened in the second half of last year. And who knows how healthy he was. A lot of times you watch somebody perform all year, and then it all comes out that, oh, yeah, well, they had a torn this or a broken that, and they just played through it, and there are a lot of examples of that. More from Joe Buck here. We don't know, I think, the extent of how hurt he was in the back end of that last year, but, man, standing in that booth and watching him do what he does, he's right. There's only one Lamar Jackson and to see his speed, his ability to cut, I mean, it just looks like there's somebody playing at a different speed. Here's what Troy Aikman had to say. The Hall of Famer, the Hall of Famer Joe, Joe, <laughs> Troy Aikman, as uh, Joe Buck likes to say. When we've covered Baltimore, Lamar is just one of those players that's just so different than everybody else. We've seen great players at that position who can do great things, running and throwing the ball, but this guy is special, and we've seen it when we've covered those games. And they would go on to say that that there's a lot of pressure on Lamar this year, contract year and such, coming off the injury, still has not gotten that extension yet, and you know, the playoff success hasn't been there either. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But before we do, what do you guys think of Joe and Troy? <laughs> they're, they're kind of polarizing. I like Joe and Troy. They're my favorite broadcast team. I know there's probably some people that disagree. And us in the AFC now are going to be seeing more of Joe and Troy this year. Are you fans of Joe and Troy? Type HY for hell yes. Type HN for hell no. Tell me what you think of Joe Buck and Troy Eggman in the comments section. There is pressure on Lamar Jackson this year. And here's the way I look at it. Think about this. As good as Lamar Jackson has been, and even though last year wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination, the pressure is on Lamar because with every passing day that he does not have that extension in hand, that is another day that he's prone to an injury happening and that guaranteed money going away. So... For Lamar Jackson, the sooner that he can get that money or continue to play at a high level and get this all worked out, 
the one that benefits the most from all that is Lamar Jackson. So the pressure's on this year specifically so he can get that money wrapped up. Don't worry about a franchise tag or anything like that. It is crucial for him to play at a high level for his own sake, besides just this team that can make the playoffs, that has an identity that can get to the postseason. They have the talent to do so. Besides any of that, just for his own self, he has to play well to make sure that he gets his future locked up for the long term in Baltimore.